giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Uh, good evening, everyone in the fun universe, and welcome to the sweet tea region recap for week four. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Marshall. I'm Griffin. And I'm Kristen. Tonight, we're going to cover events that took place this week in Georgia, North Carolina, and the Chesapeake District. We'll also have discussion topics and give some previews for the action coming up next week. But before we get started, we have more fun mugs to give away, courtesy of Redfish Products. Let's bring on producer Tyler to talk more about what it is and how we can win. Yeah, we'll be real quick, guys. Uh, giving these away every single show during Region Recap, I think, for the rest of the season. We'll see. Uh, but make sure you go check out uh, tinyurl forward slash uh, Redfish Robotics uh, to see all the cool mugs that they have. But uh, right now, currently even unavailable. You can't even buy it right now. Uh, but will be a fun mug. Uh, and what was the uh, keyword we're going to do for this? Parallax? The keyword is parallax. Can you spell that? P-A-R-A-L-L-A-X. Did I get that right, Griffin? Yes. All right, so type Parallax in chat right now. That's your, uh, I'm sure there's some context behind that, and that's your opportunity <laughs> we'll get to, uh, that in a bit. to win the uh, fun mug. Uh, so Parallax, type that in. Uh, and don't forget, it. you need the follow in order to win, and our subscribers get five times luck. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for your support. Enjoy the show. So let's uh, start things off with the Peachtree District in Columbus. So we had 36 teams head down to Columbus State University for this week's Peachtree District event. The event showcased the highest level of play we've seen yet out of the district, and we likely saw a preview to what we can expect at district champs. In quals, we had six completed rockets, nearly all done solo by 2974 Walton Robotics. It should be noted most were done under no defense, and we also had 37 HAB Level 3 climbs, but no unicorn matches. Defense became a much larger factor in this event as alliances did whatever they could to win qual matches, and this led to some teams falling down under pressure. And it saw others continue to shine, showing that they had properly prepared for this from the beginning. Climbs, of course, were a driving factor in the final seeding, with three out of the four of the top four teams being capable of HAB level three climb. At the conclusion of qual's team, 1414 one, IHOT, seated first with a very reliable climb and were averaging seven or more game pieces score to match. With their first selection, they chose 2974 Walton Robotics, who was the game piece moving star of the event with an average of over 10 game pieces per match and those six completed rockets. And they finished off their alliance with team 1795, team clutch for defense. Things proceeded just how you would expect for the number one seeded alliance as they charged through quarters and semis to make it to the finals. They would face off against the second seed alliance of 4910 East Cobb Robotics, Team 3635 The Flying Legion, and Team 5332 Toaster Tech. The first finals match started with the Red Alliance flipping, filling their cargo ship rather quickly, but then they were sufficiently slowed down by... 5332 as they attempted to score rocket game pieces and this slowdown gave the blue alliance teams 4910 and 3635 time to catch up unfortunately 5332 made a critical error driving into the hab zone and picking up a foul which when the dust settled at the end of the match caused the blue alliance to lose red 65 69 in finals two the red alliance was able to execute their scoring strategy sufficiently Better, nearly filling up the first level of the rockets and cargo ship completely, while Blue was not able to do the same. This led to a Red Alliance victory and the first Blue Banner win for Team 1414 IHOT since 2006. Congratulations to Team 4026 Global Dynamics on their Engineering Inspiration Award win, and congratulations to Team 4888, the Columbus Space Program, on their Hometown Chairman's Award win. Uh, and now off to... 
Griffin for Oxen Hill. All right. Up in Maryland, 39 teams converged on Oxen Hill High School for the Oxen Hill event. If you could cast the stream amidst its constant stoppings, you would have seen some intense qualification matches, including nine completed rockets, three which were unicorn matches. At the top of the ranking was 1885, I Like Robotics, who in those three unicorn matches so single-handedly finished the rocket and climbed. At, they picked up the number two seed in 2534, Lumberjack Robotics, and 5724, Spartan Robotics. However, they had a very tough road as all the Alliance could have reasonably, reasonably won the title. The number one seed beat out the number eight seed with a close margin, quickly moving on to the semis. In the semis, they faced the number five seed of 620 Warbox, 4472 Supernova, and the steal of the event, 4541 Cavaliers. After an intense three matches and with 1885 having drivetrain problems, the number five seed won out over the number one seed. The number five seed went on to face the number two seed of 612 Chantilly Robotics, 1418 Ve Victus, and 6543 Puma Tech. The first match went to the number two seed with a score of 61 to 48. In the next match, the number five seed came back to win 67 to 58. In the final match, the number two, two seed took it with a score of 77 to 65, giving the win to 612 Chantilly Robotics, 1418 Ve Victus, and 6543 Puma Tech. This marks the second win of the season for 612 and the first win in their history for 6543. Congratulations to 339 Killwear Robotics on engineering inspiration and to 4541 the Cavaliers on chairmen. Most improved of the event was definitely 4541 as they improved from not getting pick at their first event to being a finalist pick at in their second event. And my favorite bot was 116 or Epsilon Delta who uh, had the patented design of lifting themselves on up on pneumatics, then flopping their robot onto the level three hat platform. Now off to Kristen with UNC Asheville. Well, you never know what's likely to happen in the mountains of North Carolina. This past weekend, 32 teams from across the district converged at Kimmel Arena in Asheville to launch into deep space. This is always one of my favorite events every year, and I've always looked forward to it. We had four unicorn matches, three of which were from penalties, and the first complete rocket in North Carolina, which was rather exciting. The ranking started off about how you would expect, with the top teams being the usual suspects, but by the end of the first day, things were looking fairly sideways. With Saturday ending up with teams up in arms over various cards being issued, the ranking settled a little differently than expected by the end of Qualls on Sunday. Hmm, sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> One ranking, however, did not surprise anyone, and it was the number one ranked seed, 5190 Green Hope Falcons. They picked up Team 2655 Flying Platypi and Team 2640 Hotbots to form their alliance. Quarters started off rocky, with a yellow card plus tech foul being issued for G20 against 2655 and the rest of the alliance, nearly costing them to match with a, just a margin of one point. This was one of just many G20 cards that were issued over the course of the weekend. In the next match, Flying Platypi opted to stay home side and sent Hotbots over to play defense instead. Only one matchup in quarters required a tiebreaker between Alliances 3 and 6, and semis were both decided in two matches. This brought Alliance 1 and Alliance 2, consisting of 3196 Sport, 1533 Triple Strange, and 6894 Ice Java to the finals round. The first match ended in a yellow yellow escalated to a red card issued to Alliance 1 again for G20, which is the fifth or sixth card issued for that rolling during the course of the weekend. After two more matches, Alliance 1 eventually won out over Alliance 2. It was a great set of matches to watch aside from the penalty issues, and it was fantastic, a fantastic showing up the part of both alliances. Congratulations to 5190 Green Hope Falcons, 2655 Flying Platypi, and 2640 Hotbox on their event win. Congratulations also to 7890 Sequence on their rookie all-star and the highest rookie seed to boot, 5854 Glitch for their Engineering Inspiration Award, and to 4561 Terabytes on their Chairman's win. Marshall, what is our discussion topic for today? Well, now it's time to bite into a cake of debate from the cafeteria of chat on the corner of Conversation Street. So, the today's topic uh, is parallax and the perception when making a foul call from the point of view of the referee. And I actually think this is something that's important to understand, not just 
for the viewers at home, but also potentially for referees that might be watching. Um, I hope everybody can take some time to look through and, and, and kind of appreciate the idea that when you're looking at something from a particular perspective, you see it from that perspective. You might not see what the absolute truth of the situation might be. And I suspect parallax viewing is responsible for many of the G20 and G12 calls that were had at events this past weekend and events throughout the season. How that gets resolved is entirely up to the teams and the referees, but I do think it's a worthy topic. What do you guys think? I've definitely said this multiple times that often things look very different next to the field than they do from the stands or on the web stream. And this is usually 90% of the time where a lot of confusion comes from. Um, and it's, it's, it puts referees in a difficult situation because they, I mean, they can't exactly stand, you know, 10 feet above the field and have a bird's eye view because there's no venues that you would be able to do that reasonably in. Um, but it's, it's definitely something that, I think needs to be reiterated, I think a little more either in referee training or to the general public, just because it's, it's something I see brought up very infrequently. Yeah. And I think that uh, it's just the ideas of the sight lines, which is causing this because this is pr besides 2017, this is where you have the least, the game where you have the least visibility in almost all of FRC history. So that parallax theme becomes very, very big because it's like very few sight lines that the refs get from their positions. Yeah, I don't know what the solution is. Um, I, you know, I if it were me, I'd probably hand out step ladders to everybody, but I feel like that's not the solution to the problem. <laughs> So, um, you know, I, all I can ask is that everybody, teams, referees, volunteers, anybody involved, and parents in particular who get very agitated when teams get cards, right? So these people should just take this into consideration, right? Like the, the person making the call, they're making it from their point of view. So I don't know that that's right necessarily. It's not necessarily wrong. It's just from their point of view. So hopefully they will take the time to consider the ramifications of making those calls. So, um, folks, I have found the, uh, by the way, the solution to this issue. Nope. Uh, let's take a look. Yes, <laughs> this is all that we need. This solves all issues. This does. Thank yeah, you. Not you know, Joe solves, solves UNC all Asheville problems. brings it. <laughs> oh, do, you, do, you know, do you know what is a better solution? Doing the Macarena during Cotton Eye Joe. This, you know what? This explains why I couldn't find the CSA during part of the event. So. <laughs> Or you can be triple strange and do the YMCA for literally everything. Every so the YMCA. Of course. <laughs> or the Macarena for every single song except for the Macarena. Yeah, that was 612 at all their events. <laughs> now, I have to say, out of all the events that I've seen uh, or been to, I guess, from a, from a playlist perspective, the Asheville event was on point. So... <laughs> Uh, when things got heated in the finals, when 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 the DQ was called uh, shortly thereafter, the "Why can't let Why can't we be friends" song was on the uh, playlist. <laughs> it was it was very well done, so I, I think it was necessary. I can. I think we need to correct that Team Seventy Four Forty Three run won the Rookie All Star Award, not Team Sequence. Uh, I'm thinking of rookie inspiration. That's that's my. That mistake. might be it. So I get those two mixed up all the time. So thank you for the correction. We make mistakes too. Happen. <laughs> all right. So moving on to the top ten. So wait for Tyler to pull up the list. All right. Starting out at number. One, we've got Team 2974, Walton Robotics from Marietta, Georgia. Uh, excellent work at their event this past weekend, too. Next up, we've got Team 5190, the Green Hope Falcons from Cary, North Carolina. Following them, we've got Team 1414, IHOT from Atlanta, Georgia. Following them, we've got uh, one of my favorites, Team 2655, the Flying Platypi from Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, next up, we've got Team 4910, East Cobb Robotics from Marietta, Georgia. Next up, Team 1885, I Light Robotics from Haymarket, Virginia. A stellar weekend as well. And then Team 1533, Triple Strange from Greensboro, North Carolina. 
How strange. Uh, following up, we've got Team 3196, Team Spork from Morrisville, North Carolina. And then Team 1102, Macon Magic from Augusta, Georgia. And then rounding out the list, we've got Team 1418, Bay Victus from Falls Church, Virginia. Uh, next up, we're going to get right into the previews. So uh, first event we're previewing would be the... Uh, Peachtree District Forsyth event, the final district event before district champs for the Peachtree uh, region. It's going to see 30 teams heading up to Denmark High School in Alpharetta. While on paper it doesn't seem to be the strongest event, I'm sure we're going to see some great matches come playoffs. We're going to see the second performance of teams like 6829 Ignite Robotics, Team 1746 Auto, Team 1771 North Gwinnett Robotics, and of course Team 1311, Kell Robotics, as well as Team 1683, the Techno Titans, and Team 6325, Reset Robotics. There's going to be a lot of others there as well. Um, we've also had the South Florida Regional event. There's going to be 64 teams competing. So, And, of course, we've got the uh, big dogs that everybody's familiar with, teams like 179, uh, team 180, Team 386, Team 1369, and Team 2383. So and there's a lot of other teams as well, so keep an eye out there. Uh, now on to Kristen to cover the Blacksburg event. Uh, try oh, again. Sorry. Yeah, Griffin. Would, Griffin. Griffin. Sorry, okay. <laughs> Here. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so the, the Blacksburg event. This is the last uh, event of the season for uh, – Chesapeake before we hit district champs. So expect a lot of people to be bringing their A grade. So teams competing are 30 is a number total of 34. Previous gold winners include 346, 449, 1262, 3748, and 5724. Some previous silver winners include 384 and 1413. Others to look out for are 401, 977, 3258, and 6802. My sleeper prediction for it is 3072 with their consistent climb and a uh, consistent placement of pieces now on to Kristen with UNC Pembroke for real this time <laughs> UNC Pembroke is the last uh, again like everybody everything else the last North Carolina event before the state championship we'll see second place from teams like 2642 Pitt Pirates 2682 Boneyard 435 Robo Dogs 3737 Roto Raptors 4795 eSpots with their fantastic climb 5511, last, uh, their last events uh, event winners, Cortex Robotics, and 4534 Wired Wizards, who's been an up-and-coming uh, team this year. They're typically an um, engineering inspiration team, but they've actually been doing very, very well. Other teams to look out for, again, 6890 Sequence after their um, success this past weekend in Asheville, and our favorite bucket bot, 7671 <laughs> Fire Hazard. My favorite is and maybe i'm a little biased 6729 rob cobots after their fantastic defense showing in greensboro uh, and then to wrap things up for the evening uh we're gonna draw one more winner for the fun logo mug uh giveaway so tyler who's the winner all right so the uh winner once again you have to type in parallax right that was the uh uh Word of the day, apparently. I, uh, we might see a few Delphi thread on this, is my feeling. Hey, man. I, I, I had to use my dictionary to find it, let me tell you. Wow. Is it the one that everyone signed? <laughs> of course. What other dictionary would I use? <laughs> uh, so we'll do the drawing there uh, for Parallax once again. And thanks again to uh, Redfish Robotics. Check them out at tinyurl.com uh, forward slash Redfish Robotics. Uh, check out both this mug and others. So this mug is currently out of stock. Uh, they do have some spares for the giveaways. Uh, so the winner for that is, uh, what a creative username, a new user account. That is the uh, winner. Uh, so congratulations, a new user account. You have won the mug. Please make sure you reach out to the first updates now, uh, either here on Twitch or on Discord. Uh, just a reminder, everybody, we need your uh, first name, last name, mailing address, which uh, includes uh, your street, city, state that sort of thing i i can't believe i have to keep saying this but it is true we do need all that information from you uh so congratulations and uh thanks again uh to everybody who's supporting us including rcap 51 uh who just uh resubscribed as well thank you everybody for all of your support today man and awesome. i thought grumpback whale was a creative username <laughs> 
So uh, thank you to everyone who's watched. If you want more FIRST Robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let us others know about the show and that this is the place to go for more FRC in their lives. If you got a few bucks to share through bits, donations, or even a subscription, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted to just have you on board. Uh, on behalf of Kristen, Griffin, myself, our producer, Tyler, I'd like to say thank you for tuning in and thank you to all our moderators and chat. Our next show is in Femidation, first in Michigan. Uh, we'll talk to you next week on the FRC Southeast Region Recap, the Sweetie Region. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.